The Jason Strudwick Show on your home for Edmonton sports. TSN 1260. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is happening, Edmonton. It's Friday night. We're off and running. 10 o'clock. Friday night seems very uh, fitting. We have this guest on. We've had him on before. The Love Coach. Bruce Starr will join us at 10 o'clock. We see all the things going on in the NFL. Domestic uh, violence. Ray Rice, you know, all these situations. I talked to Bruce the other day and I said, Bruce, we got to have you on and talk about why this is happening, how it can be prevented. So Bruce will join the center. But also, Connor, you're a single guy, an attractive man in many ways. Personality and the good looks. It's a rare combination. Thank we're you. Gonna, we're going to talk to him or you should go this weekend to seek out, maybe not Mrs. Wright, but Mrs. Wright now. Now can I go tonight after the show? Is that a possibility? Well, we can ask the love coach. I don't see why not. I would. The Bruce Star, the love coach will join us. Uh, you can always text me questions at 10, 12, 60, standard message rate supply. We'll get you out of the bleachers and into the back room with the latest news from the world of sports. You're listening to Jason Strudwick on your home for Edmonton sports, TSN 1260. Very appropriate song. Time to talk about NFL. Time to talk uh, NFL about domestic abuse. Why does it happen in relationships? Who better talk to than our friend, the Love Coach? Check him out at Love. Oh, it's at BodyTrader.com or LoveCoach at AOL.com if you want to email him. Bruce Starr, how are you doing tonight, sir? Hey, I am doing just great. I'm so glad to be back on your show. I had such a great time last time. And since I've been on your show, there's been some, you know, just awful stuff going on in the National Football League with all their players gone wild. It's just unbelievable. Well, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's not ideal for anybody, especially the people involved in those situations. Uh, before we get to that, Bruce, let's, let's just kind of reset the bar and, and let everyone know you are a relationship trainer and coach and kind of just give us your background and where, where it all fits together so people know, you know that when you're talking you're, where you're coming from. Sure, absolutely. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I have been on a 38-year self-study on several different philosophies on life. I don't have a PhD. I didn't want to have a PhD. I didn't want to study things that were already in books written by intellectuals that truly don't know all that much about emotions and feelings that uh, relationships are all about. So I studied some of the most incredible uh, different philosophies on life with some great teachers and great mentors. And I really started learning a lot. And probably about 15 years into it, I started guesting on radio shows to share what I was learning. And then it, it went so well that I started hosting my own radio shows in South Florida and local uh, television shows. And then something amazing happened. I was turned on to something called AOL. Someone said to me, if you go on AOL, you'll be able to reach people all over the country with your work. I said, what is this AOL? He turns his computer around, and oh my God, look what this is. I got in on the very beginning of this brand new technology in 1993, and for the next 10 years, I would open up a room called Relationship Coaching, okay. and I would sit in this room until people came in to talk to me. <laughs> oh my God, in the next 10 years... I had over 6,000 detailed, intimate conversations with people, and it taught me so much about relationships. Well, it's absolutely perfect. You've done a great job helping many people, including professional athletes, and that's where we're at right now. We're joined by uh, Bruce Starr, the love coach. Um, Okay, let's talk a little bit about the situation with Ray Rice. You know, we saw what happened. It was, it was an ugly scenario. It was kind of grainy video. But, you know, where does this start? You know, how, how does this does a, does a relationship uh, get to a point where it explodes into this kind of, um, uh, I, I suppose the best word is violence? You know what? I'm going to get right to it. Okay. Sometimes I don't really want to talk about what, what my true beliefs are, but I'm going to get right to it on your show. And here's what I think it is. What happens is the guys, when they make their money and they want to be big shots. And so what do they do? They start going out 
to do what the players a little older than them, a little more successful, they start going out to clubs and bars. And they love the idea of being big shots and having money to throw around. Hey, who doesn't? I mean, that's the great life. I did it when I was younger, and I loved it. But I didn't have the money <laughs> they had, not even a hundredth of it, right? So could you imagine two or three guys, big guys, that take up a half a room when they walk in with all the money they have, they walk into a room, and they're ready to party, okay? And they're spending their money. Now, who are they going to attract? They are going to attract sharks. They're going to attract female sharks that are there just to hook up with professional athletes. Okay. And they know how to do it. They know how to dress. They know what to say. And when they get that guy home, they give them a ride that they never forget. <laughs> right. What happens? The guy falls in love. He's never had sex like this before. He goes crazy. I believe it alters his mind. He's not as sharp on the field. And what happens? Because this is such a unhealthy relationship based upon power, based upon money, based upon sex without love or kindness, that it's going to blow up. And when it blows up, you have the violence. People get violent. The women don't want, you know, everybody's ready to blame the guys, okay? And I am not the kind of coach, or a relationship coach that says women do this wrong and women do that wrong and men do this wrong. I don't, I'm not like that. But when you have a shark and they have a fight and that shark feels like the, the, their money guy who could make their life great for them the rest of their life, is interested in somebody else or wants to get out of the relationship, they get nuts and they get crazy and ends up in these physical battles. So it's a very, very difficult thing that these guys get into when they do what they do with their money and their power and their fame. We're talking with Bruce Starr, the love coach, about uh, you know the, the domestic violence. It uh, seems to be uh, it's prevalent through all the world, but we're talking specifically about the NFL right now. Now, now, Bruce, this is my question though. You know, everyone's been out, and uh, you know, in, in a scenario, in a relationship where there's been, you know, there, it's natural to have arguments with your spouse, your girlfriend, or, or for a, a wife or a, 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 a girlfriend have problems with her with her husband or boyfriend. But you know, to take it to the physical level, and I'm talking about the men right now. Uh, you know, I was taught as a young man. You never, from a very young age, you never strike a woman. So now, for these guys, how do they do? They make that step to from 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 what might be, uh, uh, you know, mouthy or, or using words to hurt, rather than then turning over to physical violence. Is it? Is it? Do they follow the pattern they've seen before in their life? Absolutely, that. But let me ask you something. Uh, you played some hockey, didn't you? Yeah, I was. I was actually a great, a great player. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you another question. Did anybody ever rub you the wrong way? Oh, uh, yeah. I think everyone would say yes to that answer. Okay. Well, how about if the one that's delivering all the sex? If the one that's delivering, making you look good because they're pretty or they make, as you walk down the street with them, when they get nuts, when they get upset at you, imagine how easy it is to get somebody like you into a battle on the ice. Now, you could say, hey, Bruce, that's on the ice. This is a totally different world. Sure. Listen. When somebody bumps into you the wrong way, what's the first thing you do? You look around to see what number that guy has, sure. right? Yeah. And you can't wait to get back at him, right? Why is it any different with them? Because there's so much at stake. There's sexuality at stake. There's big money at stake. And if you think a bump against the sideboards is enough to get you wild and a hundred other hockey players, imagine the emotions that goes on when a woman who might lose her payday or a guy who might lose his sexy gal that he's been having great sex with, it's all about power and sex. And when someone comes in and tries to break something up, all hell can break loose. 
So Bruce Starr joins us here, uh, The Love Coach. Uh, you can check all the stuff out, uh, uh, The Love Coach, on uh, Facebook. Okay, so basically what you're saying, you have to, at this point, it's almost impossible to reconcile a relationship that's built on, um, you know, uh, sex or and, and power and a failure to communicate. So basically, you got to take these athletes back to the beginning and, and just show them perhaps uh, the right way to get involved with a the woman. There you go. This is what I want to do. I want to talk to the clubs. I want to work for the coaches and the managers. I want to be with the players. I want to be the one that talks to them. I want to be their off-field coach. I want to be the one that says to them, look, don't be going to clubs and bars. Don't be looking for sharks. You're going to get bit, you're going to get swallowed up, and you're going to get spit out. No matter how big and fat and ugly you are, <laughs> it's going to happen. I want to be able to speak to the players while they're in college. I want to be able to speak to the players when they go from college to the pros and tell them that, listen, I know they're coached in every step of the way. Professional athletes tell me they're always told what to do. From A to Z, they're always told what to do, except after 10 o'clock at night when they sneak out and go to the bars and the clubs. Then they're on their own, and they're like little children in a candy store. That's not good, okay, especially when they're playing with big money, they're risking their careers. They can hurt the fans. They can hurt the team. They can hurt the players on their team. They can hurt the managers. This is big time, and no one's doing anything about it. I can help. I know that financial punishment is out there for these guys. It's not enough because that's what happens after. I want to get to them before they make big mistakes, ruin their reputations, and, and, and make a mess of their life when they could have 5, 10, 15 years of a great athletic life, don't ruin it in that first year or second year when you're a kid and you you don't have a coach around to help you with personal relationships. That's what I want to do to help. Makes sense to me, Bruce Starr, the love coach. Okay, now, you know, guys like Ray Rice have not gone to that point. Obviously, it's, it's, it's beyond that point. So let's say you're, gonna, you're invited in to talk to him, he and his, uh, his, his uh, wife. Um, what to do now for this couple? You know what? If there's a foundation of some love, there's a lot that can be done. So far, we've talked about relationships that have no positive foundation, sure. no healthy foundation. And if something is built on an unhealthy foundation, it's going to crumble. And most likely, they're going to have to start again. I want to be able to work with young people and, and explain, especially to the power guy, the influencer, that he doesn't have to go and do things that are stupid for his career. He can be, you know, Jer Derek Jeter, he had a mom and dad around. He didn't do stupid things. And not everybody has to do stupid things, but not everybody had a, a mother and a father, as we all know. Some, it's hard enough to have a, a mother around if she's a single mother because she's working all the time. I understand that the people need coaching in their personal relationships. And again, if they don't have the mother or the father to do this, that's what coaches are, like me, are there for. So most likely, if a couple has some love, it can be salvaged as long as I can work together with them and teach them healthy habits and healthy things and prevent them from starting those blast-out arguments that are going to end up in fistfights. Bruce Starr joins the Love Coach. We're talking about uh, domestic violence um, all through all the, the world, but specifically in, in, in professional sports and right now the NFL. Just a couple more for you, Bruce. So we know that uh, you know Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, is going to come down much harder uh, when this domestic violence happens. Is, um, you know, is that enough of a deterrent to maybe make other guys do it, or just the rage or the, the, that, that anger that can be inside a relationship between two people will it still bubble up? You know what? If the money was enough, and it should be, I just had this big argument with someone, oh, oh, come on, love coach, you're not going to help anybody. You have to hurt them in their wallets. Well, you know what? If they get two raps, they're out for good, their lives yeah. are ruined. Okay, that's after. I want to get to them before. Absolutely. There is room, but because no one's done this before, it sounds weird. It sounds like, what is this guy talking about going in and talking to the place? Just because it hasn't been done doesn't make it wrong. This is what people should do. This is what the team should do. The team should be having me in there. 
People like me to work with their clubs to prevent. You know, it's hard enough. You see how many injuries, the devastating the clubs, injuries and injuries. Do you know that 34 NFL players have been arrested since the beginning of the year? Now, wow. on top of all the, the injuries, uh, and, and the 49ers lead the league in arrests. Yeah. Nine. Crazy. If you, if you have a team of, of 50 players and 10 or 12, 15 go down in injury, and then another nine go get arrested and may not be able to play, you're ruining the sport. Teams, coaches, agents have to be proactive. They've got to find me and people like me to talk to their players before they get too carried away with their star status. All right, Bruce, we've talked a lot about professional athletes and that. It's Friday night. A lot of my a lot of listeners are young listeners and the single guys are going out tonight. So in your opinion, what's, what's, a, you know, what's the biggest mistake Young men, uh, you know, I say men 20 to 20 to 40, uh, that, that kind of uh, age range. What's the biggest mistake men are making now when they're approaching women in 2014? That is such an easy question, and I so appreciate you asking it, <laughs> because this is what I'm seeing. You know, when you and I were growing up, and I'm older than you, of course, but you and I were growing yeah. up, things were a little slower. People had a chance to get to know each other and spend time with each other. Things are so fast now. When you see guys walking down the street with their phone in front of them, they don't even know where they're walking, <laughs> and their fingers are going through the pictures, going through the pictures, going through the pictures on these dating sites. I love these dating sites. There's nothing wrong with the dating sites. But when you get addictive guys who are brokenhearted, who think the next stranger in a picture is going to be the love of their life, going to save them from the misery, impossible. So what people are doing is they're speeding up, they're speeding up, they're speeding up, they're going faster. That's not the natural way for relationships. It's not the way to meet anybody. I tell people, please slow down slow down. And one of the things that I'm going to be coming up with is a three-day weekend where people can come together on a three-day weekend, no texting, no computers, no cell phones, and over a three-day weekend, oh my God, get to know the people that are gathered together in that hotel in different cities around the country. That's what people need. They need to slow down. They need to be in one place with people so they don't have to say those stupid lines to try to attract their attention. Slow down, come together in one place, and find good quality people instead of running and running and running, thinking it's always the next one that's going to be the one. No, it's not. Bruce, well said. Let's leave it right there. Uh, you're one of my favorite guests. Thanks for coming back on, and we'll have to have you on again quite soon, my friend. You're the best. Thanks so much for having me on. That's the love coach, Bruce Starr. Check him out at bodytrader.com. You can send him an email if you want some inside scoops at lovecoach at AOL.com. That's L-U-V, coach at AOL.com. Connor, you got the uh, inside scoop for your night. Yeah, I might have to check out uh, You know that three-day weekend. I don't know where it's going to be, but no cell phones? I think it'd be great. That's my chance. Why not go check it out? I might have to. If, I, if I'm if i not here on a Friday night, you'll know why. Okay, that's fine. I can do it. I can do this by myself <laughs> for a night. Not every night, but for one night, I can make it happen. And then I might meet a girl and I might have to quit because well, I'm working too many nights. You, you know? fall in love. <laughs> exactly. You absolutely fall in love. You don't need money when you have love, right? No, so. That's it. Love fills you up.